If you haven't created an account, you'll need to do so before anything else. So let's go ahead and log in. So I put in my email address and my password and log in. And notice that I have nothing here, so I'm going to start a new project from a zip file. Remember we did the zip files. So we select and choose syllabus for 2090. Very important, you need to go to root document in the settings and click on the file that's going to be the main file for the project. You can delete the project also in the settings. So now we have the Share LaTeX uh, editor editing syllabus for 2090. Let's make an error so you'll see what an error looks like. So I took the B out of text to bold font and I'm now going to recompile and you'll see I get an error. In the PDF output the error simply means it didn't bold the word term. The editor has the little red X saying that I don't understand this command and the log file says on line 14 there's a command that I don't understand. And of course that's because we took the B out of text to BF. So now let's recompile. Uh, well let's fix the error and recompile. And there's the log again. Uh, so we recompile, everything's fixed. Notice we still have an error. Now the key here is to remember that the goal is not to produce error-free compiles, but in reality what we really want to do is even though there may still be some small errors after you've compiled your LaTeX document, a lot of times there are things like uh, box out of bounds and things like that. The important thing is that the document be correct and one thing you need to realize is that even if you compile a document and you get no errors, there still may be errors in the final result, so in the PDF itself, because the compiler doesn't check on things like grammar and spelling and things like that. You have to ask yourself, did I check my spelling, my grammar, uh, are my equations actually correct? Are my equations too big to be put in line? So for instance, you couldn't put a 4x4 matrix in line in a LaTeX document because it would create such a distortion in the line spacing. So instead, what you have to do is you have to fix it by changing to a display mode, which is what we saw was happens with the double dollar signs. So just because you have no errors in the compiler doesn't mean you have no errors overall. Now let's get the resume template. Notice I click on projects on the menu bar. I'm going to select resume sources. Once again it loads. Once again, I, very important, I choose the root document. In this case, it's going to be resume.tech. The resume.cls is actually the class file that defines what kind of document I have. 